thanks for joining myself and uh, Marina. So a little bit loud, I don't know whether it's too loud for you. Um, right now I'm on a building site here in the heart of the southwest part of London, literally yards away from Gloucester Road Station. So Marina, huge thanks for taking time out this afternoon. So the key question which we're going to focus on is looking at the in-house team versus looking at outsourcing. So we're right now, I think, on the top story. I don't know if you can tell, but you probably can tell a little bit from the background of Maybe where we are. From the chimneys. <laughs> so literally, it's a large Victorian development which has taken place. Yep, so it was a Victorian flat, used to be owned by the French Embassy, um, and um, what we're doing here is redeveloping well, the whole flat, but we're also providing a roof extension, um, both upwards and posteriorly, um, to uh, lengthen the ceiling, uh, to heighten the ceilings as well. So obviously Victorian flats, a couple of them were a little bit pokey, the rooms were quite pokey, um, even with redevelopment that would have been uh, not, not, not prime resi, not on the roof space there um, to create that. Um, so, so this development, I, I've literally just walked in about 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, and I saw a huge amount of workers here. I don't know how many people are based here right now, Marina. Um, and the key question is, we're looking at the internal versus the external. What, why look at the internal? What, why build your own team? rather than outsource because outsource is one of the key words which people use a lot so what, what was it which got nicole from uh, east state london central development so i'm not sure which one to use for this particular project but what got nicole bremner um to really consider having a in-house team uh, and the in-house team is defined as what, what type of workers would the in-house team be compared to some of the well, it's an in-house construction team, so it'll cover uh, every part of the uh, construction that we need from groundwork through to um, finishing. But I think that the, the thing to kind of note is that, I mean, we've got East Eight as our funding arm, and London Central Developments is our development arm, so that is um, the side of our business which um, handles all of the development structures. Um, and that part of the company is uh, Nicole's partnership with Abby Dodi, who's a very long-term developer, more than 25 years now. And he decided to have um, in-house construction teams, I think back in 2008, um, following kind of the crash and all of that. Um, he needed the reliability of teams. He needed to be able to be very fluid and to be able to work on multiple sites um, and to be able to provide that work um, continually, avoid delays, um, and keep that quality up as well. And also, apart from that, you know, just having a loyal team. Um, I know from my experience, um, one of the difficulties of outsourcing is that if you can't provide further work for, for a team, you know, the energy can start to lag on a project as they're thinking about, you know, what they're doing next. Um, and that can be very tricky um, in the, uh, if you're going from project to project, um, that can be very tricky. Um, so it's really about being able to streamline that process. It means that we also have, um, it's very systemized, you know, um, Abby's been doing this a really long time, Nicole as well now for seven years, so we get to use the same teams. We can put the Groundworks team on one development, we can have another team on another development, simul working simultaneously so and keep that flow going. When you talk about development, so currently this is one of the key developments taking place, there's other developments as well? Yeah, we have 11 projects on the go at the moment. Um, not all under construction, some of them in planning, um, but uh, many of them starting up. Dalston Lane and Paintworks are starting up now. Um, we're actually coming to, the, we're in the final weeks of this project, um, and we're looking at about, um, let's say, four or five weeks now, on plasterboarding, etc. cetera. So, um, so, yeah. so we, we've looked briefly at the benefits of an internal rather than external team. How do you keep an internal team motivated still? Because at the end of the day, you know, people, it's great to be motivated, it's great to be inspired as well. So what, what, what are the factors you're working with to really, you know, make these people want to come and work for you again um, as part of the team? I think Nicole talked about JV relationships. Is that something which is involved here or 
or less so? Um, not necessarily with construction teams. I mean, I think the main incentive for um, somebody coming to work is that they, they're salaried, you know, that they're, it's a continual line of work. Um, there's guaranteed work, um, they can go from project to project, you're not always on the same project either. Um, and I think that is actually a huge incentive for people. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, there's uh, um, many rewards that um, Avi has in place, I think, for, for his construction team. Some of them have been here um, since, really since the beginning. So some of these um, site managers, etc., have, have been with Avi for, year, uh, for over two decades now. So um, it's a loyalty thing. It's um, it's knowing each other, it's relationships, you know, it's sort of a business, you know, it's a business relationship. Have you, have you seen the personalities quite different though, Avi and Nicole? And Nicole's background is banking, or they really gel together to create that partnership? I think it's different, I mean, you know, that, uh, it's a good JV to think about actually because it, it's bringing different skills. You know, Avi has that much time in development um, that he's bringing to the table. Nicole is incredibly, uh, well, she's a good you know, she's been developing for seven years as well, but also she would uh, bring her uh, previous skills. She's got, you know, um, appraisals, deals, um, you know, building a brand. Um, and it's how, definitely for JVs, it's how those two come together, I think. So, so e East Day, am I right in saying, is yourself, Nicole, and Jane? And Jane, yeah, and yeah. Anna, who's our office manager as well. Uh -huh. London, London Central Development is much larger. Um, obviously, we've got quite a few sites. We've got. Um, I'm not actually sure exactly how many people we've got on the t on the construction team altogether to check that, but um, also yeah, Avi and um, he's got his um, office team as well. So. so what have you noticed from this development that you didn't expect from the beginning to the end or almost the end? Is there anything you thought, oh, I didn't expect that, or that that's worked out quicker? Anything in terms of time scale? Who, who looks after the time? Project manager or? Nicole's involved in that as well? Um, so we've got site managers, and as I say, these team members have been with Avi for a really long time. He's very used to having to manage this this amount of workload um, and this amount of exposure on the project. Um, that's why the in-house team really gels well. You know, it's organising who goes where, really, um, and at what stage. Um, but that's something he's been doing for, you know, many years. What, 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 what is so. the vision for East State going forward for this year, even in just a short term? I mean, I think we've, we've got a we've got a crowdfunding roadshow coming up. Nicole's going to be doing a lot of talking about that. For us, that's still such a key part of the development of East Day. It's been really exciting seeing that grow and people beginning to really trust crowdfunding um, as a as a way to raise funds on development. You know. Um, so, in terms of the statistics, in terms of crowdfunding, is it four, have I got the right four million in the last? Almost four million um, raised through crowdfunding with our partner Simple Equity. Um, and one of those we, we raised, uh, the first one was uh, 1.4 million in about nine days. So, you know, it, it, but it's just, I still think though that it's, um, you know, we need, well, there's a lot of more meaty discussion to be had, you know, across um, networking groups and things like that for people to be able to get involved, to trust it, um, and to, yeah, and to engage with it um, and to use it. You know, that's what we, that's what one of our goals really. So, Nicole, one of Nicole's strengths is building a brand. So, okay, of course, Nicole's presenting on the 10th of June at the uh, Property Summit. What would you say her key strength is in building a brand? What has taken her to the next step, which may be holding some people back? Uh, you know what, I would probably say uh, courage. Um, you've, just, you've just got to kind of get out there and do it. There's a load of cringeworthy stuff. Um, that people feel very uh, uncomfortable about doing. Look, I'm here in a hard hat today. I don't like wearing hard hats on screen. Um, but, you know, here we are. And um, it doesn't matter because hopefully that this will, it will have been something useful for people to, to hear about in-house construction teams, whether to, uh, whether to go ahead with that or not. I think that's really the focus. So building a brand is kind of engaging people in what you do and why you're doing it. Really simply, that's it. But it does take courage. So you know, it, it, it's just a it's just a case of just getting out there. Once you're practicing and you're doing it, you know, it, it, uh, I think I think it can really go well for, for so many uh, people in property. So, in terms of connecting with East Day, what's the best way? Um, well, we'll be at Brendan Summit. Um, Jane and I will be there as well. Um, we've also got an event coming up in June. Property Go Live. And um, that's to do with storytelling and you know, building up the 
product or brand as well, um, and that's working with a partner of ours who's an expert in uh, kind of all things social media. So um, yeah, join us for that. So as I say, look, tomorrow I'm in Stoke, so uh, it's a bit of a culture shock from London to Stoke, Gloucester Road right here, heading to Stoke, um, and it's an interview with Stefan. I'm not sure if Stefan's got me a rooftop. Um, maybe I have to ask for rooftops whenever I do these interviews going forward. Uh, I just want to thank Neil, Neil Mangan from Home Experts for being involved in the Property Summit. So um, Neil's business is uh, launching this coming week in Kensington, not far from here, literally just a mile to the north of here. Um, if you want to know more about that particular launch by Neil, uh, connect with Neil, uh, Neil Mangan, M-A-N-G-A-N. Look, I just want to say huge thanks. If you've got a site you'd like me to come to, interview, be involved in, in some form, uh, feel free to uh, let me know. Look, I know we haven't really involved you in, in engagements, Theo, today, for example. I just want to say huge thanks, Theo, for you taking time out today. Theo, feel free to send me any questions in advance about Stefan's development tomorrow. Um, I'm also going to another development. Uh, you've probably got background noise, and I don't know how much you've heard of this, so it'd be interesting to listen to this interview um, but that's it for them I just want to say huge thanks to Marina talk about the in-house versus the external um, and, and talk about the building the brand as well so that's it for the moment